Welcome to The Solution, a real estate podcast. This is episode 102. Phil Sexton on air with my co-host Jeff Seabach. How are you doing, Jeff Seabach? You know, I am I, I am extra specially good because we got a awesome guest today. We a killer by all definitions of this of the word. Uh, should I share his numbers first or do we want to throw his name out? We're gonna go numbers. All right. So uh, you know, this this agent who has been like one of the in, like individually. He has been in the top five agents in the Valley year over year over year, right? He's number one at his brokerage, which is a brokerage. Have you ever heard of, um, oh, what's it called? Realty Executives? Yes. Yes, James Wexler in the house. Woo! Give him a round of applause. I mean, if I was going to go on, if I had needed to win a listing appointment or a buyer appointment, I almost would send him instead of me. I mean, he's that good. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, hold on now. Wex, can I call you Wex? Yeah. Please. <laughs> First of all, thank you for That's coming. That's a high compliment. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I would say the same thing. No, oh, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not yes. true. Yes, I love it. I love it. Thank you for coming down and chatting with us today. Thanks for having me. Yep, we were uh, obviously we had some conversation ahead of the ahead of the show. I want to share with our listeners kind of. Uh, where you look at the business as far as the sweet spot for you, for your organization. You have a couple of people that work with you, but we'll, we'll get to that. But 50 million is your goal, right? Like yes. that, that number annually and closed volume gives you the life that you want to live, the business that you want to run. You, you were right there in 2017. And then 2018, you had a, a what you call an anomaly. Yeah. And 83, 80, 80 plus million dollars in sales last year, yes. which is fantastic. Um, this year, though, you're headed. You're now year to date, 35 million on on pace to hit that 50 million goal. Yes, so, definitely. Well done. Tell us a little bit. You have you work with other people, though. You've got a couple people on your team. Tell us about how that's set up. Sure, I have um, a little bit different than a lot of the bigger teams out there. So I run everything, almost all of the business I handle. So in order to have that amount of business, you need a full staff, and I have a great staff. I have a full time listing uh, coordinator handles all the incoming calls, appointment setting feedback. I have a full-time marketing person. I have a full-time showing assistant and then a full-time client concierge who does all lead nurture client, um, staying in touch with clients, past client development. And uh, so I need that, that four? to support the clients, to support me to support the clients. Nice. So that, was that four? Did I count four other people? Four then? plus me and then uh, two younger agents on my team who when they're um, lower priced or they're out of the zip codes that I work geographically, they work on those leads. Mm. Yeah, and lower price because you have always um, played in the luxury space, as far as I know. Like you came into the business in 2010, you joined Realty Executives, you've been there for eight and a half years, right? But you're, in my mind, I mean, in our conversations, you're always on the higher end of the spectrum. The average in the valley for those agents that are around the yeah, country I mean, you're, is you're what, 260,000 so average marketplace? 280. And yeah, 280. Yeah. And, and your average, do you know what your average sales yeah, is? Yeah, it's almost $800,000. Yeah, so it's a little bit better than the average for the greater Phoenix area, right? right? Like, like four times. Yeah, yeah. like 400%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well done. Sorry. See yeah, no, I was, I was just saying, I mean, it's, he's always been in the luxury space. I, w I was thinking that you're, you're more like closer to 900. Maybe that was last year. Yeah, last year was a little bit higher. Yeah. Last year was almost a million dollar average. But I mean, if you want to average a million dollars, you're definitely in the luxury space. Right? Like, it, it, you're not doing a ton of business, right. a ton of condos, or you're doing enough four million, five million deals, which are hard to come by. I mean, there was yeah. only over five million last year. There's only 10, 12 deals, right? right. Like it's. Right. I would say, though, that a lot of those higher end deals came from smaller deals. Like, I. Don't think you should turn down a 200, 300. If you have the time to do it, I would do those deals because they all add up. You know, five, two hundred thousand dollar deals still reaches a million. It takes more time, and most agents do have the time to work on those. And some of the best referrals I got were people who bought really small starter homes. And the best client I ever got was from someone who bought a ninety nine thousand dollar home. I got a call and said, "Oh, you helped my assistant out a few years ago. I'm coming in." To buy a house and i thought it was a prank call they're looking at five million dollar i said sure and they said well, you're like there's an extra zero in there yeah. somewhere <laughs> and i said i didn't remember it because it was a ninety nine thousand dollar condo that she bought when i was like my first month in the business and he said can you pick me up at the airport so i said sure what terminal he said no here are the tail numbers to my plane yeah <laughs> and he ended up buying a five million dollar home actually not that trip his next trip so yeah. that came from a ninety nine thousand dollar sale so 
if I have the time, I don't turn down very much. That might be your best story ever. I love that story. <laughs> I mean, the story, the Seabox story is the guy that was a, um, what was he trying? He was, he was looking for a seller carry $40,000 lot. Yeah, that was actually, it was a lead because I, I, I didn't even want to work. It was, I had a, my first buyer's agent ever. I'm like, he wants a lease purchase. Oh, lease purchase. Lease purchase piece of land for 44000 that's under contract. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> but that agent is still on our, I mean, yeah. now that guy's bought and sold we, yeah, we, 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 yeah, he's been a great client. So. But, you know, although my price point has become the median price point isn't closer to a million. There are plenty of deals. There are those four or five million dollar deals where you get one or two a year, hopefully, yeah. that bring that average way up. Really, most of the deals are in that five to six hundred thousand dollar price points, which I'm thinking you gotta have point. lots of patience because um, I generally have struggled in over the two and a half, three million range because they don't respect agents as much, right? So you really have to show patience to be able to hang in with them. Do you find that or no? It's definitely a little bit harder. Certain expectations, certain demands, uh, certain egos involved. It's definitely a little bit of a developed skill and I guess you could say patience to work with the higher price point. But you know, the lower price points have that too. This is a lot of their money. It's everything to them. Yes. So there's a different set of emotions you have to work with and deal with. So I have just as much respect for people who work a lot of smaller. I was talking, I was, uh, sorry, maybe I wasn't specific enough. The disrespect of your time and when they want to call and when they want your attention, full attention, no matter when they want it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Directly proportionate to the commissions that they pay. Yes. 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 It's, um, it is true. Seems like the wealthier clients want a lot more of your time and attention and, and oftentimes aren't hesitant to say so. Right, because you you yeah. could, you couldn't have figured this business out on your own, could you? <laughs> That's true. The uh, it is true, and I spend a lot of time negotiating things like plants and landscaping and furniture at the higher price. Yeah, things that you don't get paid on. Yeah, certainly. Well, the deal you look at the deal as the whole, right? And the right. client. I mean, not just the deal, but the client. Right. And obviously, like you talked about. You took care of the ninety nine thousand dollar deal, and that led you to a five million dollar deal. So we're taking you're taking care of that business, regardless. Like, so let's talk a little bit about the business. Where what do you consider? I mean, this is in a sense we've been in our rising star series. I want to say yeah. that, but you are beyond a rising star. Like you're a comet, right? He, you he, are, no, but he fits rising star. I mean, we only need fifty percent increase year over year. Eighty million over forty six. That's more than fifty percent increase. So what's the uh, so what causes that? How do you go from doing uh, 46 to 80 plus. So I got in the business less than nine years ago. It was November of 2010 and it was really, I had my real estate license and I need to make a living. The real estate market had crashed and I was doing something else and really needed a job trying to figure out my life. And I wasn't planning on being a realtor, but I saw it as a great opportunity. And literally I didn't have money to market. So all I had was my time, which is I think the key to success. And I started sitting open houses every day. And I actually every it. every weekend. What do you mean every day? Literally every day. So there's a famous like every Saturday, every yeah. Sunday. I'm sorry yeah. to keep cutting you off. No, every I mean, day. Every I just day. want to make sure that that point is getting made. So I won't mention her name, but one of the most successful agents in the valley for many years. She's now in her 80s. I had heard a story that she had done an home house every day for two years, literally every day. And it's not Joanne Calloway. No. Okay. It's not. Uh-huh. So the. I said, well, gosh, I could do that. So I called her. I asked her if I could buy her lunch. She said, no, just come to my office. And I asked her if that was true. And she said, I'm not saying I didn't miss a couple days here and there, but more or less it was true. So I said, well, I can do that. Right. So I made a goal to sit in a house every day for two years. And when I started, I did 233 days in a row. Mm. Every day. Can we give him a clap on that? Yeah, I just want to know what day he began, which way he ended, well, and it was over the summertime. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, you know, to continue that story, so... I did, you know, Christmas Eve, New Year's Day, Easter Sunday. It didn't matter if it was pouring rain. Probably my best client I ever picked up was was raining so hard that I couldn't even leave the house, pick up the signs. And they knocked on the door. They came in. They said, we're in town to buy. We thought there'd be open houses. And then they couldn't leave. So I taught them how to use the MLS. We spent an hour there, became friends, looked at houses the next day. They ended up buying a $700,000 house. But she was the HR for a company that relocated here. And I sold 10 houses over the next two years to members of the mm. company just because I was the only person. It just makes those day. stories so much better. Open house. Yeah. Things. 
So I missed five days that year and seven days the next over two years, and I still do them. So I always say, and I say it modestly, like if I have time to do an open house, literally there isn't a realtor in the Valley who doesn't have time to do an open house once a week, if not twice a month. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I am. Um, I love the work ethic, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, he, he has one skill, though. He's, a re he's really good at making relationships. In the, his inter him, inner personality, his interpersonal skills are at the higher level. Don't let him say you have one skill. Right. You give him back. You give him back. <laughs> no, no, no. But that's the best skill of an agent if you want one. It's like well, when I teach because uh, like with J Jason Mitchell on it, he's like, ah, oh, you just been in the open house and you just converted like three, you know. Right. I'm like, dude, you're, yeah. you're special at yeah. this, right? Yeah. Like, well, you know, I, I appreciate you saying that, but I don't even know if that's true. I mean, if you look at it, if I did – in the first year, 350 open houses, and maybe I sold 10 homes. That doesn't make me look <laughs> very good. Yes. Yeah. But if you look at 10 homes at an average commission of $12,000, I made $120,000 well, in the first year in a business. If you look at it that way, that's a lot I of mean, success. I mean, to me, I was more leaning towards, right now I'm trying to teach people to be more prepared for the open house. Yes. Right? When you got into the business, it was a little different. The availability inventory wasn't out there. There wasn't a hundred pictures of every house on the internet. Right. Like, like the skills, like you, you, uh, you and I have discussed this in past years. Like it was a little easier to convert the open house lead because the consumer didn't have what they have today. Sure. And that today, open house people, I think, need to have off market properties right. to have something to 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 dangle those people to to convert. Sure. And and you know there is a lot of truth to that. You could at the risk of arguing with you, I mean, there are also a lot less people doing open houses. If you drive around the valley on weekends, there's a lot less competition. There are a lot of more defeated agents. And I think you may have to work a little bit harder, but that's true for us too in different parts of our business. When markets are tougher, we adapt. We maybe work a few extra hours to try to make up for it. But I have agents on my team who are doing open houses consistently and they are picking up leads. And then all of a sudden, they take a few months off and all of a sudden their pipeline is, Empty. It's weaker, yeah. It's not a coincidence, but you do have to do a lot of them. If you knew, hey, they only come in on Saturdays, you would work just Saturdays, but you don't know if they're going to be looking on the way home from work, the way to work, if their right. flight got delayed and they just happen to be looking at houses, so you have to do it. Or in the pouring rain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Consistently, and that's really the key. The people who do the most, it's sort of like fishing, right? If you go fishing every day, even if you're not good at fishing, you're going to catch fish if you fish every day yeah <laughs> i hope yeah, <laughs> yeah. And yes. that's true you know versus somebody who's really great fisherman who fishes once a month i still take the person who goes fishing every day to probably catch more fish over a year yeah i agree nice so you, you do those are your first two years in the business yes and so now you have obviously you don't do open houses every day but you were no. saying last weekend you were sitting in an open house so i don't want to take that away from you at all but you have now um, parlayed your success into having systems and processes that you follow to help. Cause again, I'm like, dude, you're doing 46 million and then you do 86 or 83 million. Like that's a almost double. And I know it's not just stars aligned. Like you put together some sort of plan of attack or effort, or is that when you brought on team members, like anything, it's, you know, it's a slow growth. I mean, at the risk of sounding cliche, it's like, if I always ask people, if you were to open up a coffee shop, you know, how many days in your first two years a week would you be there? And they all say, you know, seven, seven days, right? But then eventually you get busy and you hire staff. And then eventually you get busy and you have someone with a chicken suit flipping a sign and then, you know, a marketing person. And then you do some other advertising and then you need more help and you have an accountant and you build a business over eight, nine years. But I didn't start like that. But most agents have the time to do a lot of these things themselves. And then over time, you say, gosh, I need help here. And you interview and you find someone, I need some software systems and you try a few and they work out. But it takes a lot of years. It's not something in the first two years I did and there were a lot of mistakes along the way. But over eight years, yes, I built up staff and found people and lost people and spent money on things that didn't work. So um, you're saying the silver bullet is just work a lot and get better at what you do and then you slowly build a great business. That's Sort of the simple thing. Yeah. Your, your training program, success in, <laughs> success in 30 minutes by Asif Jassiba and yeah. uh, Phil Sexton. No, candidly, that's really the case. I mean, if you look at the best athletes in the world, some of them aren't the most talented, right? You talk 
Michael Phelps, right? He's someone said he swam four hours a day for five years straight, right? So I didn't get a day out of the pool for five years. You know, you talk about Tiger Woods, like he was hitting. But he has, he ball. did get to eat a lot, though. Yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like, I sound like somebody on a diet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, it's an advantage. Maybe we should start swimming. Yeah. 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 But you know, the best athletes in other professions, it seems to be. Yes, they have great talent, but they seem to even excel and get to the next level by being the first one there and the last to leave and put in work and not just do the bare yeah. minimum. And the best agents in the Valley that are, we can name a handful of people. I mean, you're running a team, you're going on listing agents, you're marketing, you're investing time into changing the business, you're doing a podcast. You know, there's a reason you guys are so successful. You're not just showing up a few days a week asking for a few leads and letting your phone ring. Yeah. I mean, I think, though, agents are handicapped by the world of real estate because what you're explaining is something that we are telling the same story. I mean, it's not like this was planned in any way, but we tell the same story of, you know, uh, hard work and its commitment to time and you have to prospect and you have to. But it just seems that the industry wants to let everybody believe that it's easier. Right. Like to me, you know, brokers, uh, if you go interview with three new brokerages, they're going to tell you how, oh, if you come here, you're going to be successful. If you come here, you're going to be successful. If you come here, you're going to be successful. And if you go meet with the title rep and they're like, if you come with me, then you're going to sell houses. If you come with me, you're going to sell houses. Right. Like, so all of a sudden. Don't forget about the lead providers. Right. If you buy our leads, you're going to be successful. If you buy our leads, you're, if you buy our product, you buy it's, our product. Um, first of all, if you're looking for jobs, always go with the person who tries to talk you out of it. I mean, that's really. True. I mean, if they're going to say this is really hard, you have to do it on your own. We're going to try to help you with leads, but we're going to give you support and training. If you're invested to make this a career, that's the person I go with because there are very few teams that have so many leads that they're just handing them out. You know, they'll keep them to their good agents or themselves. So in order to get those, you have to be really skilled and adept and earn them. And the idea of someone saying come with us we're going to be so successful is a little disingenuous because if it were that easy we just run an ad every month the phone call would ring it takes a lot of work and effort yeah it's interesting as we have brought on and off team members over the last seven years now um when i'm sitting across the table from an agent and i don't i no longer know if that agent is going to be a killer or not i can't tell anymore right because you have people that you're thinking I don't know how this person is going to connect with anybody. And the next six months, they bring home 35 sales. And you're like, I, I don't know. I, and then you have somebody who is so good at selling you. They're just telling you about their, their how connected they are with their and everything that they've done and can do. And you're like, man, this person's going to be a killer. And then you're three months later and you've got no escrows to where now it's hard to tell. Right. And so for us, one of the things, one of the searches that we're on is, how can we find proven track records of talent, right? right? Where, who's coming to the table, not with a promise of what's going to happen, but a, a history of what has happened so that we can then help build on that. And that's, I mean, as we're talking about some of our killers right now, the ones that sell 2000 houses over the last 20 years. And now let's figure out how we can make that number grow on a yearly basis. Right. Sorry, I got that. It's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting game though. I like the, I like when you were talking about, you used to coach agents, you used yeah. to do the training program at your brokerage. So I've done some training over the years and gone through interviewing and I don't find it easy, any easier than you finding good people, but I have some accountability and tracking systems that I require for new agents. And you can find out very quickly on how they fill out those forms, their attention to detail. So I use a form that's really a daily tracker, what their activities are on a daily basis face-to-face -face meetings we call something like break bread where it's you know coffee or lunch with someone um, bigger group events maybe a business networking event like a chamber of commerce how many calls did you make to past clients current clients what i call referral partners how many thank you cards how many um, emails did you send out to new relationships and you track that on a daily basis and we have certain goals and then we have a weekly what do you call the chart people i've heard you use their greatness tracker yeah the greatness tracker. Right. We actually have a greatness tracker on our agent resources. It's yeah. funny. So yeah. people call that Darren and, Hardy. Are you a Darren Hardy guy? I'm not, but there, that yeah. form is used around in a lot of these training organizations. And then you have a weekly time block calendar where you have to treat this like a full time job. And, you know, it can be your time at the gym, you know, family time, date night, 
um, open house hours, showing hours, and you have to hold to that really strictly. So before you go to bed on Sunday night, you have to send me what your plan is for the week. And then finally, your lead tracker. That better be growing because if you only have two or three names on that, you better have a really good closing ratio. Otherwise, <laughs> you're going to have a hard time paying <laughs> your bill. So, you know, the goal is to fill that up. And I only look at leads that are people who are going to buy or sell in the next six months. Anybody who's renting and yeah. a year from now says yeah. they're going to buy is not a real lead. I, I've had some of my best clients call me and I think they want to list their house and they tell me, well, our neighbor, we started playing bridge with them and we're good friends and you know you were great but I want to list the house so too much can happen in a year we've seen that with current clients walking into model home centers so if someone's not planning or buying really in the next four months that's not a real lead so then we track that and if you're doing the other activities and if your lead tracker is not growing hey let's sit down and find out why and if we can improve that um, if you're not doing those things you're not going to have a good lead tracker and if you're have a new agent and they're following that and they're talking to you and going over it and trying to improve, they're dedicated to this business. Right. And that type of person will succeed who's looking at this as a real job and being accountable to themselves. And you're keeping in line. The person who just kind of wakes up at a day and say, gosh, what should I do today to find a new client? Unless they're just lucky, they're not going to succeed. And this is not a business where you can rely on luck for five, 10, eight, and probably beyond because most people are trying to do this as a career, not just hey, I can make some money for the next two years. Yeah. So we were talking a little bit about it in the pre-show. Um, so you you used to mentor new agents in the yes. business, right? So can you tell us about like anything that, how you would help people realize whether they were on the right track or, you know, whether they were doing the right amount of activities? I mean, this is the daily form that he was just talking about, right? So when I got into this business and I had some prior corporate background in Wall Street and phone calling, cold calling. And so as a result, give we, me five. Uh, hey, are you, were yeah. you a cold caller? I give was. me five. Yeah, yeah. So we had he to, dresses nicer than I do. Yeah. Not today. <laughs> I thought this was a, <laughs> he's on Wall Street. It's a podcast. Wait a minute. Podcast. Yeah, yeah. 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 Radio show. But if I was says, good, yeah. I would always have an emergency suit. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you only you did do. 80 million. Yeah. 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 We just didn't let them get it. We just didn't let they them said, get no, it. They said, no, starting in but one minute, really, you don't have time. You're really in the top five of every list that we know, right? Like, we were only good, right? <laughs> the, uh, when I got into business, and I learned this on Wall Street, right? It didn't matter how good you were at trading stocks and, you know, buying uh, assets for clients if you didn't have any. So they didn't let us think we were financial advisors or planners or investment bankers. We were in the prospecting business. Mm. And, so I always thought of this as it doesn't matter. It's like if you're a chef, if nobody comes into your restaurant. How good are you? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So doesn't matter how good you are. Yeah. Didn't matter how. So I never really tried to be a great realtor. I think by doing enough transactions, you learn that. I tried to be really good at prospecting. So I looked at this as my job on a daily basis was to be prospecting. And I wanted to make sure that I was doing a certain amount of either talking to people who can buy a house, sell a house, or refer me to someone who can buy or sell a house. And that's how I judged my day and my hours. And I tried to look at myself critically and say, if my job is prospecting, meaning talking to those groups, buyers, sellers, or people who can refer you to them, would I give myself a raise? Would I even hire myself? Or gosh, maybe I would fire myself. And most agents, when I sit with them and they, and I ask them these questions, hey, your job is to talk to these three categories of people's buyers, sellers, or people who can refer you to them. How much of that have you done in the last week? Would you give yourself a raise or would you fire yourself? Almost unilaterally, they cross the board. They say, I'd probably fire myself. So you can't expect to succeed. If well, that's your job is to meet new clients and you're working 50 hours a week, but you're only doing four hours a week of your job. Any other job you would get fired on. If you're a trainer and you're not training people, right. but you're still working 40 hours a week, but only two of it you're training people, you're not going to be very successful in your work. And so most people aren't doing the right money-making activities. And they're not doing enough of them, even though they're all hard workers or they think they're hard workers. You know, when we talk with agents on our team, and which I, I love everything that you're saying, just so you know. And when we talk to agents on our team, we talk about the mindset shift that they're embarking on, right? Because joining our team doesn't always look like just getting your license, obviously. But what I like that you're talking about is you are changing people's minds too and trying to get them to quit trying to be a good realtor and be a good prospector. You're starting ahead of the game, right? Which I think that that's a good 
mental game because we all need these mental exercises it doesn't matter how where you get them right we all need these different mental exercises to help us keep going pushing through the boring times of, or whatever i like that one you're be a good prospector this week this so month. if you could help them at home how, how could they look at themselves in the mirror by looking at their phone like you were telling us so it's a little activity that i did i started and then the people i trained i made them do that and i guess you can see it but they would take their phone and then we would go through your call history so you can see it. And I won't show mine, hopefully not up close. So you don't yeah, see it, but don't think so. you look at, and you go through it yesterday's history or the last two days and you start deleting. All right, that's a realtor, that's a title company. Wait a minute, that's is that my wife's phone? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's LB. Just kidding. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you start deleting, all right, that's a client, that's a family member, that's a friend, that, that's a lender. Lenders definitely don't count even if you're listening, you know, title companies, that's the same client. And you go through and you delete the calls that are not either buyers, sellers, or again, people who can refer you buyers, sellers. And at the end of the day, let's see how many actual money-making phone calls that you actually had. And I haven't seen anybody have more than two. Wow. In one day. Even after you've done that example. Now these are new them. agents. Yeah, we of go course. through it as a group. Yeah, but like more than once. Yeah, the so first six months you go through of the that. business, they go through and you get rid of lenders, title companies, inspectors, appraisers, family members, Verizon. And wow. you look through and very few people are talking to enough potential buyers or sellers uh, in a day. And I just say, look, make a goal. So I want to talk to 10 people a day. Make those calls by noon and go play golf. I mean, right. don't drag out a whole day to make two calls. And you can't keep talking to the same client that one deal right. and count that as, boy, I worked four hours today. That isn't your job. That's executing on your previous job, which is finding new clients. And it's like you always hear athletes say, you know, all the success was the you know last six months of practice. And that's really true. You have to really spend your time yeah. uh, talking yeah. to people. And most people, they ask, what's the best technology you have and softwares and systems? And I always, you know, pick up my phone. I mean, there has to be 10 people you can call and say, with your phone and say, hey, you know, I see your business is growing, you became partner at the law firm, I'd love to buy you coffee and hear about your success. Or, hey, you know, you're teaching kids soccer, I'm, I'd love to hear how you're doing personally. And you can really find a way and have coffee, it only takes 20 minutes, it's only a few dollars, and no one wants to spend okay, that much so time with you anyway. All right, all right. So. What, if, what about if they asked you, well, well, what do I say to them? The It's a fairly easy conversation because it's, you're asking people about their family. They ask you about their family. Are you a Ford guy? Well, I've heard that, but I've always kind of thought of that naturally. I mean, if we have a conversation, how's your family great? How's yours? How's work great? How's yours? And they naturally ask you. And you should be able to say to them, great, real estate's going really well. I just helped this young family find a home, or I found this investor a, a property to discount. And you can use a success story. Are you a storyteller? I don't really think of that myself like that but maybe i am do you think i am you are yeah i am I actually you're a really good storyteller oh. yeah no yeah. actually i find the people that and we, we try to work with people to to, to help them because it's it helps people relate right like a story takes people from this thing over here to i can relate to that and it helps people it marries an idea and a concept to um them taking it and and really it, understand it because people are just constantly distracted every single day Absolutely. and they have to really be in the conversation and stories help people really connect with the conversation right. and as a salesperson you learn that over time most of the people who are realtors are likable charismatic professional they definitely are passionate passionate about their business and most people are excited about houses so it's not a hard conversation to have right. and the more you do it the more comfortable you get and certainly people are going to be better and some not as well but it really is about the numbers. Most people listening, most realtors have enough friends and network that they would, wouldn't be able to have lunch and coffee. So find your five closest people, talk to them, find out what they do, learn about them, and you know, let them know that what you're doing. You don't have to, I never ask, hey, who do you know can buy a seller house? I share with them what I'm doing. I care about them. Yeah. And hopefully they think highly of me when someone mentions it. But I, I can't, under, understate this enough that it's a numbers game. I mean, on Wall Street, it was you make 200 calls a day, you talk to 20 right. people, you get 10 leads, and one person wants to buy. 
and you try to focus on the success. And very few people, I don't care how talented you are, are going to be able to do a third of that and reach the level of success yeah. that you want. It's really, you can make up a lot for inability of storytelling and some of these other things you were nice enough to say about me, true or not, for working. In fact, some of the most successful people in life, including Wall Street, weren't the smartest, weren't the smoothest on the phone. They were the ones who were the first in, the last to leave, made the most calls, worked on Saturdays when they didn't have to. Yes. I mean, it's my key it. to my success as well. I, I know. I think that's going to be a wrap. I know that I don't, I don't want to keep you too long. Three I, minutes. I, I, his think, point was very simple. Going? Three minutes. Okay. Right. The, I don't, and I hope this doesn't sound flip, but as a salesperson, as a realtor, I don't really pay attention. I don't care. I always feel like if your goal is to sell 12 houses, there have to be, if you're going to be in this business, you have to believe that there are 12 people out there who think highly enough of you and value you personally, professionally, that there's 12 people a year who will either buy or sell a house with you. There has to be. An That's the there. nicest way anybody's ever told me they don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> right? If you think about you it, don't care. Market, you don't care. Yeah, this, has been, been, well, I, this has been a great market to sell real estate, but also the number of realtors has doubled. We've had other big players, Zillow, Redfin, Open Door. The competition has never been greater. The listings are down, but the good realtors are doing more business. So there's always a challenge. High interest rates, low interest rates, low inventory, high, in, high inventory. Now the competition has never been greater, but there are still realtors doing business because they're out there believing that there's 10 or 20 or 30 people every year who think highly enough and see the value in using you as you know someone to help them buy their dream home or help them sell their home. There definitely is for everybody listening. Love it. Wrap it up. See I, I'm good. I, I was going to ask him, what do you see the as the toughest, your toughest competitor in the market space? The toughest competitor right now is inventory is really low. So... A lot of the realtors who have had an easier time selling homes are going to have to roll up their sleeves and work a little bit harder. It's harder at open houses because they have a lot of the information. But there are still agents on my team that I know at their value who have who are doing the open houses. Hey, every Wednesday and Saturday I do an open house for four hours. And at the end of the month, they're saying, Yeah, I picked up 18 people and I'm talking to two and one is bought. So the inventory is low, and I think you have to work harder and and clearly. The market has been on, what, a nine-year bull run. So things are going to flatten out at some point. I'm not sure if it's in the short term. So you have to be prepared to work hard if you want to stay in this business. But there's plenty of business. If you look at the number of sales each year, I mean each month on closings on the house, yeah. there are plenty of closings for everybody listening. Yes. So to say you can't sell houses is just not true. You can look at the numbers you're selling. Them. Are you just willing to work hard enough to do it? But almost every realtor I met is talented enough and likable enough to do it. They're just not on a daily basis doing the money making activities. Money, ma I mean, money making, uh, that's what I'm gonna take from this, right? right? The money making activities laid down by the James Wexler. Number one, realty executives agent, been there 10 years, appreciate you coming in, man. Thanks guys. Thank You're you. awesome, buddy. Yeah. Thank awesome. you. Thank you. Thanks, Count guys. us down, Mauricio.